Hi, if you have not seen my previous video on Dolby Atmos, I recommend you do as it will give context for this video. In that video, I explained what I think is the biggest issue holding back Dolby Atmos. I even made a joke about object-based audio and used the term object-oriented audio in a comical way, and it seems that some people misinterpreted this into me thinking that object-based audio is bad or inherently flawed. It's quite the contrary, actually. I think object-based audio has many benefits. In this video, I'm going to explain why a Dolby Atmos mix can potentially sound better than the stereo mix. In Apple Music, you can set your music playback settings such that Dolby Atmos is automatically decoded or downmixed into two channels. One important thing to recognize about these audio formats is that, at the end of the day, audio is just what is outputted from the speakers, which can generally be summarized by different frequency responses at different locations and points in time. Anything achievable in object-based audio can be achieved in channel-based audio, given that the system used to create the recording is the same one used to play back the recording. Now, with Atmos, supposedly the number of speakers you have is not important and the correct objects will be displayed in space regardless. However, this is impossible outside of an object-based algorithm fine-tuned for each specific listening room or headphone for an individual, such as what would occur in a commercial Dolby Cinema. You can losslessly make an object-based audio recording a channel-based recording for that specific system by recording the output of the decoded channels and playing it back over the speakers. What this means is that there is no fundamental difference between channel-based audio and object-based audio once the information in the Dolby Atmos recording has been decoded. I was listening to a recent album released by Kepler and noticed that the Dolby Atmos recording sounds more realistic, the vocals sound more natural, there's much more dynamic range, you can hear swings and volume much more accurately, and Listening to the stereo recording, it sounded compressed and lifeless, and this is undoubtedly a benefit of high dynamic range music. What has unfortunately happened for stereo music is that it has become a common practice for mastering engineers to brick wall the music such that it is as loud as possible. The reasoning for this is that consumers perceive more loudness as better quality. You can see an image here comparing the waveforms of Curious by Kepler with the Dolby Atmos recording in the top and the stereo recording in the bottom. Now, when you record someone singing in real life or real instruments, you will not get the brick wall effect you're seeing in the stereo version. This is only achievable with dynamic compression, meaning that it is inherently not true to the source being the actual singer or instrument being played. But again, at this stage in time, both of these recordings are stereo, so there doesn't actually need to be a difference. The good thing about Atmos is that if you submit a brick walled recording such as the stereo one in the bottom, it will be rejected by Dolby. I'm sure you can successfully submit a brick walled recording for Dolby Atmos, but the loudness would be much quieter than the stereo counterpart, so there would be no point to actually do this. I held a poll on my Discord server asking which version people prefer after normalizing perceived loudness, and the results are pretty inconclusive, but you can see right now there are two more votes in favor of the stereo version. I think more than anything this has to do with the fact that people are used to listening to compressed or brick-walled recordings, but if you actually pay attention to the different recordings for this song in particular over a calibrated system, you will notice that the Dolby Atmos recording sounds more true to life. The vocals sound like the singer is actually there with the stereo one the fluctuations in volume are not realistic, it's just constant throughout, essentially. Dolby Atmos, on the other hand, does require superior listening conditions and equipment than stereo music. The reason for this is that the dynamic swings are higher, meaning that more power is going to be required for peaks, and a higher signal-to-noise ratio is required for accurate playback because the separation between sounds is greater with Atmos than with stereo recordings. In general, that is, I would like to reiterate that it is entirely possible to make a stereo recording that is extremely dynamic. But mainly for the benefit I explained in this video, the higher dynamic range of Dolby Atmos recordings over stereo recordings, I am going to endorse Dolby Atmos for use with songs that are mastered well or albums that are mastered well. There are a lot of Dolby Atmos albums that are mastered terribly, but there are several that actually sound extremely good and far superior to the stereo counterparts. Although, it would be ideal if Dolby gave proper loudspeaker configuration criteria instead of giving incorrect information to mixing and mastering engineers, leaving only those in the know to create high-quality recordings.